All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I am Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I want to do an update on the market, on the equity markets. We have had a shift. We're in a downward direction right now, but I really want to go through exactly what's happening and look at the charts in detail because I think something very specific is happening, and I don't think it's time to panic, but I do think there is a little more room left to the downside. So, so if you stick with me, I'll explain what I'm talking about. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, if ever Everybody could smash the like button that helps this video get out to more people I've just added this market update to my channel recently so I'm doing this a couple of times a week and I really want to get it out to more people so I really would appreciate if everybody would smash the like button thanks so much for your support so let's talk about the market and and the market is a story of two things that have occurred over the last several days it started with CPI data on Tuesday and to me it ended last night with FedEx announcing so I'm gonna go through those two events and show you you why I think in the short term that ended a nice relief rally that we were really just getting going on but unfortunately we have now broken out of that pattern so I do think we have a few more days to the downside but again I don't think it's time to panic because we have the Fed talking next Wednesday so that is going to be a reset in one direction or the other so really all of this action in the middle is fairly short-term action because again next Wednesday is going to drive what happens for the next month over the market so if we just look Look at where the market's at right now. The s and down 1.35%, and it's the middle of the trading day on Friday the 16th. The Dow is down just over 1%. The NASDAQ's down 1.72%, and the Russell's down 1.86%. So this is another red day, but more importantly, this is a final confirmation to me that we have broken out of our relief rally pattern. Okay, so this one I've drawn up with a bunch of arrows because you're going to see there has been a trend over the last three or four months, and all of the indexes have followed a very similar trend. It started out in the middle of June, everything bottomed out, and we hit new lows. This is, you know, this was about a two-year low, really, for all the indexes. So you can see from there, we had this yellow arrow. That was two months long. That was from the middle of June to the middle of August, and that was an extremely strong relief rally. So if we measure that, you'll see it's just under 20% on the SPY, and the NASDAQ, I think, did even a little bit better than that. The cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin even did a little bit better than that. Actually, a lot better. That was a 43% rally. Ethereum was even a bigger rally than that. So you'll see we peaked on around August 15th or August 16th. And then we had about three weeks in a row. You'll see an arrow down where we had a pullback. So this was just under a 10% pullback. That's pretty common, not unnatural. And then you'll see we hit this line of support. So I've had this line of support here. This is an ascending line of support for the SPY. This dates back to the low on June 17th. So unfortunately, then CPI data came out. So right in the middle of what I thought was going to be a nice, maybe three or four week relief rally, the CPI data came out and, and it was a big shock to most people. I, I don't think it was that dramatic. I feel like this was an overreaction to the CPI. I did a separate video on that. If you want to check that out where I go through that in detail, don't get me wrong. It was not a good report. Inflation is not under control and the Fed is going to have to keep taking action. But I, di I didn't think it was such an outlying shocking result. So the market had a massive negative reaction to that. However, we did pull back to our line of support and we were staying steady there for a while. We were giving this a very strong test. It looked like maybe this was going to pass, maybe this was going to fail. And then FedEx came out yesterday and announced their numbers. And that was a catastrophe. So I'm just going to look at FedEx real quickly here. And, and this will be a separate video because this is its own topic. But just to take a look, this is down almost 23% today. That is a nightmare for a stock like this. And, and FedEx is one of the bellwether stocks. This, this is a leading indicator for how the rest of the businesses are doing, or at least it's viewed that way. Now, FedEx missed earnings. They missed revenue and they missed earnings. So I also think this is a massive over overreaction. They had some very harsh and scary language in their press release that came along with this. And the market definitely, definitely is panicking over this. Because again, you know, it's not like they're going out of business. They had a spectacular quarter, but it was much less than they thought they were going to make. They missed their target earnings 
and they missed their target top line revenue by I think about four or five percent. So, you know, not a big deal, but a miss is a miss. And this really confirms the move to the downside. So with the FedEx announcement after hours today, we just really, really confirmed this breakout to the downside. So when you're sitting on a line like this and you have one candle that closes below it, there's always the chance that the next day you're gonna have a green candle and it comes back up above. And this was just a little fake out. But with the FedEx news, that just solidified. We are now way below. Next Wednesday, the Fed is going to give their information on what the rate hike is going to be. So depending on what that rate hike is and depending on their language, that really is going to dictate how much of a pullback we have here. I do think there's a very legitimate chance we're going to pull back and retest the summer lows. And that sounds awful, but if you measure from where we are right now, that's only about a five and a half percent pullback from here. So nobody wants that. That's not great, but we're so close to that. And we do have momentum in the wrong direction that I think it's probably a realistic price target to think. And I think that we'll probably hit that potentially even before Wednesday afternoon when the Fed announces. So there is a chance, I think a greater than average chance that what the Fed does is actually just going to confirm what the market already thought what I'm saying. So this is the QQQ. This mirrors the NASDAQ. You'll see the identical story. Yesterday's candle closed ever so slightly below our ascending line of support. And then today we have gapped down. So same thing here, just a little over a 6% move left to retest the lows from the middle of June this summer. So to me, I think that's now the most likely case scenario. However, again, I think there's a very short term goal and we really need to wait until next Wednesday to figure out what the next major move is in the market. So on the Dow Jones, we're literally, we're just about three or three and a half percent from retesting our lows from this summer. So again, we're so close to that. We've got momentum in that direction. So not financial advice, but all of these charts look almost exactly the same to me. It looks to me like we're headed back to retest our summer lows on the indexes. So quick, I just wanted to show you a chart of Google. Google candle wicked below its summer low and that was its 52 week low. So Google has already retraced its steps back to its 52 week low. I'm gonna take a look at one more because these large cap stocks, really you've got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and Tesla. And Tesla is now under a trillion, but they're still a huge stock. Those five are just so much bigger than all the rest of the stocks in the stock market that they move markets. But you'll see it's a mixed bag. Whereas Google is retesting its summer lows, Apple is nowhere near its summer lows, which which leads me to believe there's still more potential to the downside here. So Apple is 13% off of its summer lows. And Apple, by the way, is by far the largest market cap company traded in the US. Microsoft is second. Those two have traded places over time, but those two are monsters. And then you've got Amazon and then you've got Google. So just to graphically take a look at what happened to FedEx, it's hard to almost even see on this chart because You've got all this activity winding here, and then all of a sudden you can't even find where it went. It's like it went off the map. Essentially, to, this is today. So you can see, you wanna talk about a gap down. That is a gap down. And you can see this red candle right here is the volume. So this is a massive, massive volume day and a gigantic gap down on FedEx. And to me, that was, to me, that was the last straw. It started with CPI. Everything really started to pull back when those CPI numbers were a disappointing surprise. And now FedEx is like the icing on the cake. So the relief rally definitely is over. We're in the middle of a pullback. It looks in my opinion, like we're gonna retest our summer lows. And again, we're not very far off. That's a five or 6% move on the indexes. I don't think it's time to panic yet because you know, a five or 6% move is not a big deal. In fact, you know, if you've got a watch list, you may find some things pulling back to a price target that you think is a good buying opportunity. So obviously, again, not financial advice. You guys got to do your own due diligence. And then, of course, we're going to have to revisit all of this after the Fed announces because that's going to be the single biggest factor by far that affects the stock market, barring some other unknown event occurring between now and then. But as of the normal course of business, really, I think we're just gonna drift down until next Wednesday afternoon, and then we're gonna need to reassess from there. So that is my opinion of what's going on in the market. Take it for what it's worth. So thanks so much for watching. And again, if you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe and to smash the like button. So thanks a lot, and we will see you in the next video.